the morning mists clear among Rwanda's thousand hills, the heart of the country and the lives of her people come to life. Situated near the equator in the heart of Africa, Rwanda is a land of varied landscape, diverse wildlife, and gentle, welcoming people. In a country roughly the size of Maryland, there are over 8 million people, making Rwanda the most densely populated country in Africa. Large families are customary, and community life is close and vibrant. Neighbors greet one another heartily and share in one another's needs. Visitors are also warmly welcomed. That's why it is difficult to imagine what this country suffered during the civil war that began in 1990 and culminated in the genocide of 1994. Over 800,000 people were killed and almost 2 million fled for their lives to neighboring countries for refuge. Retaliation by both the Tutsi and the Hutu continued long into the decade. Although the country is progressing after the genocide, the people of Rwanda still suffer. AIDS and crushing poverty threaten the population where the average lifespan of a Rwandan is only 40 years. Amid these crises, however, there is hope in Rwanda's wounded heart. Churches dot the landscape, evangelism is contagious, and worship is exuberant. People meet under tarps, in the shade of trees, anywhere they can gather to pray and sing together. Jesus be praised is even part of a standard greeting. The church, though, has problems of its own. 85% of pastors have only a sixth grade level of education and have no theological training. Some only desire to become pastors because of the status they attain in their communities or because of their hope of tapping into outside resources. Legalism has also seeped its way into the church. It is true that because of these situations, Christianity in Rwanda is miles wide but only inches deep. The, the goal of MNC is, is to provide discipleship for church leaders in Rwanda. We feel like um, the, the, there, are, there are hundreds and hundreds of churches in Rwanda. Every, every street you walk down, there's another church. But within these churches, oftentimes, no one has any education. They just don't have training. They don't have the background. And we're, we're there for them. We want to enable them. And we want to um, pour ourselves into them so that their churches can be really function as the body of Christ. So we decided to start New Creation Ministries to bring some depth of discipleship into this. We provide discipleship and ver we use various venues to offer discipleship, whether it be through a trade school, through literature, through a pastoral training program, through a lay training program, uh, whether it be studying in the evening, studying uh, in modular courses. Uh, our, our goal is to provide discipleship and make discipleship available to those people. We primarily work with uh, pastors that are coming from um, the, 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 poor, the poor areas, the poor demographic. Um, they say that 90% of pastors in Rwanda have no education beyond primary school or the sixth grade level. So we teach it at sort of a, a very low level of education. The Lord just really blessed us with a, a good set of buildings. Uh, it's not everything that we want to build, but it's a good start. It's a good foundation. We have a, a main building has um, four offices for our staff. We've got uh, three classrooms plus a. One of those classrooms can open up and become a big meeting hall for 300 people, at least seating Rwandese style. We've got a library, the, the, the embryonic start on the library. That's our main building. Um, then we have a, a nice uh, cafeteria, uh, kitchen. That we have we have then another building that's a dormitory that sleeps. I, I believe we'll sleep about 70 people in the in the in the dormitory. Out behind the main building, we have. We've built four gazebos, which are not just for people that sit out and have lunch in. But these, these are specifically designed um, with our philosophy of teaching in mind because we really focus on small groups. That's a very important aspect of our training. 
as far as we know, at this point in Rwanda, there is no one else that is doing what we're doing. A lot of there are a lot of ministries that are working in French and English and working through translators or, or working at a, a at a higher level. But what we're doing is we're working at the at the very bottom level with pastors that church leaders that have sometimes a very slim ability to even read and write in their own language. So what MNC is doing is, is, is really important and really needed. Four years, three years at a time, and the students have they must be pastors at the time of study. This is what MNC is all about. It's it's um, enabling the Rwandese pastors, the Rwandese Christians themselves, to impact their own country for Jesus Christ. The impact of MNC is huge. We have 50 pastors that we're training. Each of those pastors is leading a church. That translates into as many as at least 2,500 uh, Christians who are being discipled, hundreds of small groups that are being um, led throughout the over the hills of Rwanda. Uh, it translates into the, the gospel being preached in, in, in fullness and, and truth by um, these pastors and their, their, their evangelists. The impact is huge throughout Rwanda. We just graduated uh, 17 pastors from our, our training program. I asked them before they graduated about the work they were doing. I found out that during the four years they were studying, they had planted ten churches. We don't feel like the need is for bringing in outsiders to plant churches or do evangelism. Our, our burden, our desire is to facilitate and enable the church in Rwanda so it can do its job. We don't want to do what the church is doing. We want to facilitate them for they, so they can do the job better. Rwanda is a, a tiny country in the, in the heart of Africa that 25 years ago was basically unknown. But because of the, the tragic history, recent history of Rwanda and the crying needs of the country, it's, it's captured the heart of many people around the world today. But for us and our team in Rwanda, what has really captured our hearts, what our focus and burden is, is the church in Rwanda itself. We feel that if the church in Rwanda can be enabled, can be empowered to function as the body of Christ, the church in Rwanda can be at the forefront of the healing and reconciliation and building uh, a new country of Rwanda.